The American Civil War broke out in April of 1861 when George was 15. He desperately wanted to serve his country, but was prevented by his father to do so. He said that George would be allowed to enlist at the legal age of 17, but prayed the war would not last that long. The Civil War raged far longer than anyone had expected, and by 1863, the carnage was staggering after battles like Antietam and Gettysburg. It was clear then that the war was not the romantic adventure it was once thought to be. Even though the casualties were mounting and the Union Army was demoralized after years of defeat, George Westinghouse enlisted in the New York Volunteer Cavalry as a private shortly before his 17th birthday. The next year, he passed a special mechanical examination to become an officer in the U.S. Navy. His military service made a huge impact. Later in life, he said, my earliest greatest capital was the experience and skill acquired from the opportunity given me when I was young to work with all kinds of machinery, coupled later with lessons in the discipline to which a soldier is required to submit and the acquirement of a spirit of readiness to carry out the instructions of superiors. George's older brothers, John and Albert, served in the military as well. Albert was captured at the Battle of Gaines Mill and confined to Libby Prison for a short while. After being exchanged and released, he was killed in 1864, leading a cavalry charge. I'm convinced that his father thought his brother was the one that was gonna be successful in life and spent a lot of time with his older brother. And quite frankly, for everything I've read is, I don't think his father ever thought George Westinghouse was gonna to amount to anything. The war ended in 1865. Although more than 600,000 American lives had been lost, life began to return to normal. The 18-year-old George Westinghouse Jr. was mustered out of service and enrolled at Union College in New York. He quickly became bored. It was recorded that the president of the college said to him, you're wasting your time here. A classical course is nothing for you. You have a genius for invention, cultivate it, and you will become a great engineer. He left school after two months and returned to his father's shop. At that time, the country was in a rapid state of change. For a man full of ideas, there was much to do. It was an excellent time for an inventor or an industrialist like Westinghouse to come onto the scene. Lots of people came onto the scene at that time, obviously. Even the Carnegies and so forth, a lot of what we call today the robber barons, we're just starting out in that time frame. And we had an economic boom going. There was a residual of the war. And it just, a, it was a great time. Investment money was there. People were moving forward. Industries were cranked up. It, it was a time of expansion. On October 31st, 1865, the 19-year-old George Westinghouse Jr. was awarded his first patent for a rotary steam engine. He started working on that patent at the age of 15. It was granted to him at the age of 19. As we go through his life, we can see the role that rotating devices, the large rotating turbines and large rotating generators, the impact they had on the electrical industry. And then you look backwards and see that George Westinghouse had this interest in uh, rotating engines from his very first patent as a young boy, started at that work at the age of 15. For the next 48 years, he would, on average, take out one patent every month and a half. He had two other early patents for a car replacer, for getting cars back onto the tracks when they derailed. And an item called the railway frog was a uh, device used between the tracks where two tracks intersected. These two patents here were very successful for George Westinghouse and provided him the money he needed to uh, get started with the Westinghouse Airbrake Company. 